Now, then, Martin Lewis is here to sort your money matters. But before we get to our first caller, happy birthday, Martin Lewis! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. 51 is the new 15. Yeah. Or it's at least you. the reverse of 15. It'll do, yes. Oh, well, I hope you have a lovely day. Have a Whatever lovely day. Doing, yeah. Thank you. Um, but, listen, we can't avoid the day job uh, because we've got lots of callers here. In fact, Trudy's got in touch and she says, my state pension is £170 per week. My private pension brings my income to over £220. Can I still claim pension credit? I think the likelihood is not, but um, you're just on the cusp of trying. And it's actually an important question uh, at the moment, because there is an urgent deadline that anybody aged over 66 should be looking at. I was warning about this last week, and the government has put out a press statement on it this week. So, uh, because th there's this catch up payment for anyone who's of state pension age called pension credit. And what it does is it tops up your income if you're not getting enough from your pension. Now, the, the actual eligibility criteria are really difficult. In most cases, it would top you up to £201 as a single pensioner, pensioner £306 as a pensioner couple, where both of you are of state pension age. But because if you're caring for someone or you've got disabilities, it can be a bit more. This is my rule of thumb on pension credit. If you are a single pensioner and you have total income, and that's what this, the, the caller was talking about, total income, of £220 or under, or you're a pensioner couple and you have total income of £320 or under a week, then don't stall, just call. Now, that's the best rhyme I can come up with. Actually, you're probably better off going online to the pension credit calculator, but you can also call up about pension credit and ask them, am I eligible? Don't worry if you're thinking I may not be eligible. I should, probably shouldn't call them. They might think I'm trying to defraud them. It doesn't work like that. You can call them up and ask them, are you eligible? There are nearly a million eligible people in the country not claiming pension credit. The average payout is £3,500. Mm -hmm. But it's actually more important than that. Even if you were only due 50p, the reason pension credit's so important you should still claim it is it's got a superpower. It is a gateway benefit. If you get pension credit, you're then eligible for a host of other things, including the cost of living payments. The first one this year is £301. It's already being paid, but if you claim pension credit within the next 10 days, you will get that £301 too if you're eligible. But also free TV licences if someone is over 75 in that case. Um, housing benefit, council tax benefits, dental health benefits, and a whole raft of other things, cold weather payments, all depend on whether you get pension credit or not. Okay. So even if you only get a tiny bit of pension credit, you still get so much else. So please, if you know anyone age 66 out there or you're age 66 on a low income, let's together universally have a clarion call. Are you missing out on what you're entitled to? And try and get them to have the money that's very important that they need. Right. Very OK. Good, um, Andy says, I have a bonus saver account with HSBC at 3.5%, which has just reached £10,000. <clears> Will I start getting less interest when it goes over 10000 If so, what's the best thing to do with the money? I'm in a position to add to it and I don't want to use the money. Uh, yes is the answer. When you go over £10,000 on that account, which is a, a, a decent rate savings account, but you have to have the bank account to get it, I, from memory, you get 3.5% up to £10,000, and I think it's 2% if you're still in the first year above £10,000. It's not the worst rate in the world, but you can do far better. Easy access right now. Top paying savings account is CHIP that pays 3.7%, and you can put a lot more in there. Um, or Shawbrook Bank on 3.65%, or you could fix with Smart Save or Oak North at 4.86, 4.87% if you could lock money away. So actually, while six months ago I was very much in favour of that HSBC linked account because it was better than the top open market accounts I, that anyone could get, yours you have to have the bank account. Now actually there are open market accounts that are better, so you could just move the money elsewhere. So there's a couple of examples you can go and look up on uh, good trusted websites, uh, what the top savings accounts for a whole different range of choices are as well. OK, thank you, Andy. Terry says, I'm thinking of going to Spain. Is it cheaper to use my Barclays contactless card over there or should I get out euros at the post office? No. That's my Spanish. Um, right. <laughs> Neither of those are particularly good options. Um, if you were going to get travel cash, then get yourself onto a travel money comparison site to get the very best rates. But the cheapest way to spend abroad is using the right plastic. You do not have the right plastic. When you spend abroad, 
for every hundred pounds of euros or dollars or dong that you spend, then you normally, the, the bank is charged a hundred quid's worth. But they then add what's called a non-sterling transaction fee onto the bill that you get. So you pay, and with Barclays, I think it's roughly 3%. So you would pay 103 quid for your 100 pounds of euros. But there are a range of specialist cards that don't add that fee and also have lower charges for cash withdrawal. Now, the top two at the moment, top debit card is the Chase card, which gives you the same near perfect rate the bank does and 1% cash back on spending in the UK and abroad. So effectively, it's even cheaper than the bank gets. Um, you, I'm up, capped up to 15 pounds a month. Or as a credit card, it's actually the Barclay card. You've got a Barclays debit card. The Barclay card reward cards, reward card that gives you a quarter of a percent cash back and perfect rates abroad. With that one, of course, because it's a credit card, Phil, you'll have to pay it off. In full. Go, go. Well, I was late well then. Done. I was reading the next one. You took me by surprise. Came out of nowhere. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. Suddenly there was a test. Um, right, thank you very yes. much indeed. Yes. You're uh, going to pay it off in full at the end of each month. So, in full. So, no, neither of those are the best option. Go get, yourself, go get yourself a specialist card. Use that every time you go abroad. You're getting perfect rates every time you go. And okay. If it's a credit card, pay it off in full. If it's a debit card, just preload it on the Chase card. Right. Very good. Um, I was uh, actually reading ahead, which is why you caught me by surprise, to okay. Julia, who said my state pension is 10 years short of receiving the full amount. Should I cash in the policy I took out years ago to top up my pension? It hasn't made much money. OK, well, I'm going to split that into two because the second bit's much tougher than the first. Until the 31st of July, you are able to go back until 2006 to buy back any missed pension years. After the 31st of July, you can only go back to 2017. So there is a massive opportunity here for people to buy back those pension years. You should only be looking at it if you're not predicted to be getting the full state pension when you retire. If you're not, though, for, you know, on average life expectancy, this is probably the most lucrative thing you'll ever do. I've done a programme on it. I've got a big ITV special coming in June on it uh, where I'm going to go through step by step because it's complicated. But if you want to go and do your reading, there's definitely articles online that you can read about this to find out if it's worthwhile for you. You can do. In your case, what the difficulty is, should I cash in an existing pension? And what you mean by that, I presume, is a private pension, which is an investment account to get the state pension. Now, there's very little out there on average life expectancy that comes close to being as good as a state pension. So I'm hedging towards a yes, but I don't know any of your details and haven't done a fact find. One big advantage when we come to pension questions over everything else is you can get free one-on-one -on -one guidance about pensions. So somebody can actually spend time going through your specific bespoke case with you one-on-one -on -one without you paying. And that, uh, for that, you go to Money Helper, which is a government-backed free agency. So I'm not going to give you an answer. I'm going to say it's likely it is worth it, but please call Money Helper and get somebody to go through it on a bespoke basis, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, to see if it's likely to be worthwhile for you to cash that in. Uh, but just to give you an example, I've had people who've got in touch with me who've spent something like £4,000 and their, their effective return by the, by the time that they finish getting their pension, when they pass away, is likely to be £50,000, £60,000. Right. Mm. So and that's inflation-proof, so it's incredibly worthwhile. And some people can catch those national insurance years up for free. If you were a carer, um, uh, for example, uh, or you were looking after your, ch your grandchildren instead of the parent while they were out to work, you may be able to get national insurance credits for free with we'll top your pension up by huge amounts. OK. Thank you. Thank Have you very much. Day, As always, you. happy, happy birthday.